G'day. Last time, we talked about the number 0.9999 going on forever. Infinitely many nines to the right of the decimal point. And we did an ironclad mathematical argument to show that this has to equal 1. There it is. Beautiful argument. Ironclad seems fabulous. But here's my thing. People only ever seem to talk about infinitely many nines going to the right of a decimal point. What about a number with infinitely many nines going off to the left of the decimal point? What could this be? Hmm. Well, first of all, it's a number that ends in 9. Actually, it ends in 99. Actually, it ends in 999. Actually, it ends in 9,999. So it's going to be a very big number. In a machine, in a 10-run machine, it's a whole bunch of 9s loaded off to the left. Okay. Now, this seems very strange indeed. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to follow this exact same completely believable argument that we did for 0.99, all these 9s going to the right of the decimal point, and apply it to this beast with infinitely many 9s going to the left. I'm going to copy it exactly. Step one, give it a name. I'll do that. I'll call it G for Georges. Right, what's the first thing we did? We multiplied by 10. Okay, I shall multiply Georges by 10. So it's a number, a whole bunch of 9s, it ends in 9, times 10 will give you a whole bunch of 9s that end now in 9, 0. There'll be 10 Georges. Great. Next thing we did, we subtracted them. I subtracted 9.999 forever, take away 0 0.999 forever, and got 10f's minus 1f. Over here, subtraction. I guess I've got a choice which way I want to do it. Um, I might do the top line, take away the bottom line here, because I've got a whole bunch of 9's ending in a 9, take away a whole bunch of 9's ending in a 0. I can just see that difference by 9 would equal 1 George, take away 10 Georges, makes what? Negative 9 Georges. Okay, so George must be negative 1, which means this number here infinitely many nines, infinitely many nines to the left of the decimal point must equal negative 1. Exactly the same mathematics. We tend to believe this one, but this one makes me go, ooh. Why does it make me go, ooh? Because apparently it's saying, if I get out a calculator and I go, okay, 9 plus 90 plus 900 plus 9,000. I type all this in and I did this forever, plus 90,000, plus 900,000, blah, blah, blah. If I could do that to the end of time, apparently my calculator in the end will show the answer negative 1. That doesn't seem right. In fact, it seems really crazy. Um, if I drew a number line, for example, on a number line, this seemed believable. Uh, on a number line, what I'm really saying here, I'm going to draw a really big number line this time. I'm not going to go around the room. There's 0. Apparently I'm saying, we start with the number 9. You go there. Great. And I make that, actually, no, I think 99. I guess I'm further along the number line here. I actually think, no, 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 make, make it 999, way further along. Apparently these numbers, if you kept doing them, are approaching negative 1 on the number line. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the right, yet somehow they're meant to be approaching the number negative 1. This is crazy. So I guess my point is, when can you believe the mathematics? I mean, can you believe it in one spot and not the other? I mean, you have to be consistent here. Either believe the math or don't believe the math. And if you believe the math, I have to say 0.99 forever is 1, and I have to say this one is negative 1. Crazy. Crazy. You know, actually, maybe this is true. I mean, if I did ordinary arithmetic, this is some space, do it here. If I took this number, infinitely nines to the left, and added 1 to it in a long addition algorithm, what do I get? 9 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. Kaboom. 9 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. Kaboom. Carry the 1. Carry the 1. Carry the 1. It does seem to equal 0. Adding 1 to this number seems to give you 0. Oh, it must be negative 1. Do you believe any of this? This is crazy. This is crazy. So what's actually going on? We can't just pick and choose when we choose to believe math and when we choose not to believe it. We can't just like, be wayward that way. So what's really going on here? All right, I'll give it away. There is a way out of this philosophical pickle. Think what we did. I started this argument by giving it a name. I basically said, I choose to believe has an answer. There's some, let's give it a name. If you choose to believe has the, an answer, then the answer has to be 1. All this argument has proved, if you choose to believe this quantity is meaningful and has an answer, then that answer has to be 1. All I've done over here is said, if you choose to believe this quantity is meaningful and has an answer, then that answer has to be negative 1. The math is not saying whether or not you should believe there's an answer in the first place. That's up to you. So most people here believe this does have an answer, and if you're one of those people that believes it's meaningful, in which case, you have to believe it's 1. The math says if you believe there's an answer, then the answer is 1. Most people choose not to believe that this is, has a meaningful answer, in which case, whole, whole argument's moot. Nothing to say. Does it have an answer? That's not meaningful. Nothing to say. 
But if you're a person that chooses to believe it does have an answer, then lo and behold, that answer better be negative one. So the math is actually being very honest here. If you choose to believe there's an answer, here's what the answer must be. Now it's up to you to decide whether or not there should be an answer. Now this is interesting to me because now I feel like there's an opportunity to play. Because when I draw this one out on the number line, I feel like there should be an answer to it. I feel like these nines want to approach the number one on the number line. That feels meaningful to me. But when I do the number line for this one, it feels completely unmeaningful to me. Unless, here's my opportunity to play, I can think about the number line in a different way. Maybe I can warp my brain in some way so the number line actually makes sense that these numbers really do seem to converge to a value. That is, maybe there's a way to make mathematics give meaning to this, in which case the math has just proved to me its meaning is going to be the answer negative one. So what I'm going to do now is go crazy and think, can I change the way I think about the number line so that actually this number is meaningful and on that number line I would see these values do really truly approach the value of negative one. Now that is wild. And that's what we'll start doing next lesson.